Here we are guys, North Prairie, Wisconsin. Ryan's Diesel Service to be exact, uh, and he is a performance shop and diesel repair shop here. So today we're gonna talk about Duramax issues, okay? Now, I've laid out so many videos on these, but we're gonna hit on just some of them. We're not gonna go through every single one of them, but what will leave you stuck, and we're gonna talk about the transmission control module. That's gonna be the subject of this video, but we're also gonna talk about other things. So if you own a Duramax, probably really important that you watch this video from start to finish. We can gain some knowledge and as well gain some dialogue in the comments below for all the stuff that we've missed so we can all learn together as one big diesel community. We've done a lot of YouTube videos here. He does a lot of uh, turbo builds. He does a lot of transmission builds. He's a diesel performance shop guys and it's almost like your one stop because not only does he build turbos here but he also has a department that's specifically for driveline which of course you guys all know who Kodiak Truck is. Uh, their co-partners father son business here so it's pretty cool to support the american small businesses but not only that huge shout out to you guys if you're interested in any sort of diesel parts make sure you reach out to them also use my coupon code truckmaster it's going to save you 99 percent on everything on his website <laughs> 2006 2015 uh gm duramax diesels in particular are very common for throwing a u0101 which is lost communication with the transmission control module uh, better known as the tcm Couple failures that can happen on these that guys will start seeing service traction control, um, stability track. Um, they'll start having a trans, their trans temperature will disappear. It'll lock into third gear. Lots of things that we hear um, every single day. Had a guy here recently that actually had called that uh, was actually camping uh, somewhere in Colorado in the mountains or something like that. And he was traveling back down uh, with his family and he called us and said, hey, I'm having an issue with my transmission, what's going on? What it boiled down to was uh, he was having TCM failure. We ended up going, started working through him, trying to help him out of how we could get him off to at least get him into a safe area because he was on the side of the freeway with his family. We ended up going having him pull his TCM out of the truck and actually stuck it in the freezer for about 20 minutes in the back of his camper. When he did that, the TCM was actually able to cool down and not have issues. What, what is going on here? We're having... After we were rudely interrupted, what's going on here? <laughs> It'll actually cool the TCM down. In a minute, you'll see what they look like actually when they're burnt out. Um, but he ended up going, pulled the TCM out, stuck it in the freezer in his camper for 20 minutes, pulled it back out, stuck it back into the truck, and was able to make it to the next off-ramp. The truck shifted and everything was good. Eventually, he once he got into town, yeah, it started acting up again, but at least he wasn't, you know, stuck in the second or third gear while on the freeway while trying to travel. Um, so he ended up calling us back, actually got a TCM. We actually next day aired it to him, and he literally plugged it in and was able to keep on traveling back with his family. As you can see here, this is actually one of the issues that actually ends up happening. This was one that actually came in from an in-shop. Um, you can actually see this resistor right here is all burnt up. Uh, destroyed, it actually looks like it might have exploded. Um, but this is kind of a common issue that we see. Um, this one here, we actually just cut open the back to see what actually failed on it. Like I say, that's that's kind of what they look like when they fail. Um, I know I've cut some of them open before that actually don't look this bad. Um, I think this one was one that the customer just kept on driving and clearing the code and finally something just let fly and that was it. You may be wondering right now, what is a TCM? Uh, TCM is the transmission control module. So what this is gonna do is this is gonna control your shifts um, as, the trans as the truck is going down the road, you know, when to upshift, when to downshift, pressures on the trans, solenoids turning on and off, etc. Uh, that is this main purpose of this module here. This module is going to be located on the driver's side radiator fan shroud. Uh, as far as getting this TCM off, very easy. You're going to have a push pin right here. You'll pull this push pin out, make sure you don't drop it. Once that push pin is pulled out, you'll end up going, pull the TCM out like so. A red lock right here you'll slide this lock down and you have two little tabs you'll push like so that lever will come forward and it'll pop right off to put it back on reverse roll it down in slide it down put the red lock tab back on this is literally less than five minutes you could be back on the road running uh, driving the truck with no problems I do normally recommend guys disconnect the batteries simply because a lot of guys don't have an edge insight monitor or uh, easy link in the truck to clear the codes out or even have access to a scan tool. I had a lot of people literally change these in parking lots before. Um, so I always tell guys drop your batteries that way you don't have to worry about the check engine light on. Your batteries are disconnected. It's only 
30 seconds out of your life of changing the cell. Um, this can save you big time going with one of our pre-programmed options versus going to the GM dealer. Uh, the dealer would get about $1,000 to $1,200 was the highest I ever heard. Um, plus, if you're stranded on the side of the road, you're going to have to pay a tow bill. So there's a lot of options that we can go and help you out and save you money on uh, with going this module. Come with a lifetime warranty. We were the first to actually offer a lifetime warranty on these control modules. So you have a failure again, you pick up the phone and call us, ship it back to us, and we'll take care of it. I realize that you guys may not need this module right now. Your truck may not be broke down. But eventually, if you have a 2006 to 2015 truck, um, your module is going to fail. If you want it long enough, eventually, you're going to start having problems. Find these modules on our website, which is ryansdieselservice.com. Do a wiring inspection, make sure there's no chafed wires. We've heard of guys before that prior to buying a TCM, they call us in, ask for advice. You know, we've had guys call back before and say, hey, you know what, I found a broke wire. I don't need a TCM after all. They're good, back up and running again. Here you also check the connector. Uh, make sure no green connectors, the pins are all straight, and lastly, make sure you check your trans fluid level. One thing that I would say would be leave you completely stuck or stranded, especially if you don't have tools in your truck. If you are stuck, you got something. For example, an 11 millimeter uh, ratchet wrenches are always great, especially when you're blowing intercooler boots, and that's what we wanted to talk about in this one right here. Yeah, uh, we definitely see a lot of issues with uh, the intercooler piping, uh, charge clamps, boots, that sort of thing. Um, couple examples, LB7s, uh, they have an issue with where the pipe itself on the driver's side where it comes off the hot side there it actually scrubs up against the frame it'll actually wear holes right through uh, you don't know how many trucks we see through we see a lot of LB7 trucks that come through here and uh, they'll scrub holes right through the side of there guys don't even know about them they don't even know that they're having issues with the truck they don't even realize it pretty much every truck that comes through this shop uh, prior to disassembly will always go and charge the system I've seen pinholes in them. I've seen, you know, intercoolers where the sides, they've actually cracked. They've had issues that way. So pretty common that we see, you know, boot issues, clamp issues, that sort of thing. I had a customer, uh, I want to say that was last spring. He was a uh, uh, snowbird and he was coming back from uh, down south, coming back up to Wisconsin here. And uh, he was stuck in the middle of New Mexico, middle of nowhere. On those LMLs, what ends up happening is uh, uh, they don't have an actual, like, adjustable clamp. So basically when it comes off the hot side, it's just the clamp and then this band that goes around there. Guy was stranded literally in the middle of, literally in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing. He sent me a picture and I, I would kind of been freaking out if I was him too. So it's one of those things, you know, um, I know there's companies out there that do sell pipes, you know, HSP, they're a great company. Um, and they sell aftermarket pipes where, you know, with the boots and the clamps and everything where you can have that full adjustability. In this guy's case, he had nothing. He, there was nothing he could do. Uh, he ended up getting creative with some uh, duct tape and zip ties and uh, <laughs> limped her along and made her to where he needed to be. But definitely always want to look at those. Um, make sure, pro tip, make sure you guys go. One thing that, uh, you know, I've always beat into my guys' heads is... Uh, Fluid film or uh, PB blaster, WD-40, anything of that nature. Spray those clamps before you hit them, especially if you're in the northern states or salt or that sort of thing. Um, those clamps aren't cheap. I mean, those clamps can range anywhere, you know, from 25 to 50 bucks. I've seen some of them. So just don't buy a Dorman one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely don't do I, that. I've <laughs> seriously had so many issues with those Dorman ones. <laughs> don't buy anything Dorman in general. So one thing that I always tell guys, you know, spray those clamps down, give them a little squirt. Uh, you know, and even in some cases, work it in just a half a turn and then back out. Save you, save you a couple bucks. Well, another thing that will definitely leave you stranded is the infamous CP4 failure in the LML Duramax. So your 2011s to your 2016s. As you guys know, the LMLs, uh, they have a problematic CP4 pump. It's not like we're seeing that every single day, but we have seen them where they come through and they do have metal on the regulator. Um, definitely one thing that can leave you stranded for sure. We always tell guys, you know, especially guys that, you know, are traveling in cross country or whatever, and even local guys too, you know, for that matter, I guess as well too. If you ever get a low rail code coming on or the truck's down on power, you're having issues with that thing, stop driving the truck, especially on a truck on those LMLs. <clears throat> It'll, in most cases, be cheaper if you can catch it ahead of time, you know, and having that issue where metal could be potentially going through the system, it's going to be cheaper at that point. Pay the tow bill to the local shop and have it fixed at that point or diagnosed or whatever the case may be. Um, you can pull the regulator out on the top side of that pump. You can actually go, there's uh, three torques, if I remember correct, that hold them down. You can pop it right out, slide, slide the AC compressor on the side. You could check it yourself if you really wanted to. Uh, I know we get guys that come in. Heck, I got a guy coming next week that's actually bringing his through here. And literally his main reason of bringing the truck in, 
he wants it looked at. His buddy had it go out on his, and he's all paranoid. He's got 150,000 miles on the truck, and he's like, I don't care what it is. I just want to go and pull it. Um, Exergy does make a fuel saver. We do a lot of them as well, too, where we'll do a fuel saver and, like, an air dog lift pump setup on there. It's cheap insurance, guys, you know, so definitely something, though, that can leave you stranded. That pump goes, it's sending metal through the whole fuel system, you know, tank, line, sender, whole nine yards so anything diesel fuel touch touches has has to be replaced cleaned very thoroughly if you want to try chancing it and that sort of thing so it can get expensive i mean i've heard of shops charging heck when this first started being an issue and they were out of warranty i heard dealers charging twenty thousand dollars for that which is crazy um you know some guys you know independent shops i hear anywhere from five to ten grand depending on how bad it is uh, it's a labor intensive you know i know sh shops that charge you know 30 40 hours of labor alone just to go and do that you know times that by a you know 100 120 you know bucks an hour depending on whatever the shop rate is it's not a cheap fix by any means another common issue that a lot of the i would say 07.5 and above duramaxes would have are some of the problematic issues with the diesel particulate filter as well as all the other issues with the emissions present stuff that's on there so with that being said what are some of the common issues that you see coming in from customers yeah a lot of knock sensors, um, a lot of them. Uh, LMLs are really bad for them. Uh, NOx 1, NOx 2, we see that a lot. EGT sensors. I will see tank heaters as well, too. Usually it's one of the sensors that you're having issues with. They definitely can be stranded. Um, we've had plenty of customers that have had to been towed in or whatever the case may be because let's say they're traveling from up north, northern Wisconsin, prime example. There's not a lot of dealers up there. There's not a lot of shops up there in general that you know know what they're looking at. Clearing the codes in most cases, isn't going to get you back on the road. You're not going to be back up and running again. I always tell customers, don't let these trucks idle for long periods of time, you know, especially up here in the north. Guys will remote start their trucks walking into stores and that sort of thing. And the problem is those trucks aren't going through regen. If you're short tripping it, if you live in the city, I mean, we're about 30 minutes from Milwaukee. You don't know how many trucks come out here where guys, they just go, they don't drive them, they don't get them up on the freeway enough. I've had DPFs come in here with over 100 grams of soot pack, you know, in them. And in some cases, I can get them clean through multiple, multiple regens. And in other times, they're pulling it off and getting a new DPF. So, unfortunately, the day and age of just saying, hey, I'm going to go and use that... Uh, dirty word delete that doesn't happen anymore that's that's not a reality anymore and unfortunately the way times are changing you got to make it legal you got to make it right it wouldn't be a bad idea if you are leaving the diesel idling for a long period of time to get that thing on the highway and not break the law but open it up you yeah. know so you can oh, yeah. force some of that stuff out without forcing it into regen mode so what are some good tips that we can do as duramax owners to get that thing to be able to do a regen yeah Getting it out on the freeways, you know, drive cycles, that's one big thing, you know, if you're not able to do that or whatever your situation may be, um, Edge makes a great product, you know, I know we've talked about them before, the mm -hmm. Edge Insight, I, I love that product, That they are the best, when guys come in and they say, hey, I want some sort of monitoring setup, I love them, I, I always try to sell a customer on those, from clearing codes, reading codes, um, injector balance rates. One awesome thing on those as well too, uh, I don't know about the CTS, the, the first version, but I know like the twos and threes, you can actually go and do forced regens on them. So you guys, again, that aren't able to get them out, there you go, plug it in, take it for you know, lap around the block, get it to temp, check all your fluids like it says to, hit it and walk away and let it go. Just make sure it's not close to your house because <laughs> melt siding off your house. It gets a little warm off the tailpipe, so especially, be careful with that. <laughs> and especially if they're running like one of your 60 millimeter turbos. Oh yeah, yep, It's gonna yep. sound like a jet, so. <laughs> you betcha. And it's super loud. As a matter of fact, I remember a guy putting a piece of paper right there by the tailpipe while I was in regen mode and it actually caught the piece of paper on fire. Yep. It's pretty crazy. Yep. So to lead us on to the next subject, when we talked about scan tools, it's always good and it's very handy to have in the truck. As a matter of fact, I'd recommend even if you can't afford the CTS-2 or the Edge CTS-3 monitors to buy yourself something, you know, cheap and easy to be able to clear the codes. But to lead us into the next thing that would leave you stranded would be the lint mode issue. So, Ryan, what's lint mode and uh, what are some of the things to look after on that one? You betcha. So as far as lint mode goes, multiple different things to put you in the lint mode. I've seen, uh, you know, map sensors, mass airflow sensors, fueling issues. Um, those are usually the pretty common ones that we see, besides transmission limp, of course, too. Lint mode's going to happen in all different ways. For an example, in transmission limp, you're going to be in third gear stuck. You're not going to be moving. It's not going to upshift. It's not going to downshift. Um, your fueling, your air, air lint modes and that sort of thing, generally speaking, you're still going to be able to drive the truck, but it's going to be a 2,000 RPM 
limp mode. It's not going to allow you to go over 2,000 RPM. Some cases I've seen where it's going to not allow to even shift gears, you know. So, um, but that's usually the common things that we see when it's going in the limp mode. Again, having the access with that scanner, you know, uh, you know that edge monitor, it's going to help you. Let's say you're in the middle of traffic. Let's say you're out on the freeway. Something happens. What are you going to do? How are you going to get off the road? Clearing if Dropping your battery cables isn't going to really be that good of an option. So definitely having that kind of, you know, monitor to just, just quick go in there, clear the code, keep on at least to get off the road and get to safety is definitely a plus. Yeah, and, and it's funny because we I just talked to you guys about it. it wouldn't be a bad idea to have an 11 millimeter ratchet wrench for the intercooler, you know, boots just in case one of those flew, flew off and you had to put it back on in a pinch. It was a good idea to have one of these right here or just, you know, even just an open end 8 millimeter or 5 16 wrench to take to drop the battery cables mm -hmm. and negative and positive. I think that's probably, we took that out of his toolbox right there. <laughs> it's, always, it's, it's always a positive to have one of those tools handy in your truck, it's simple. It's a good idea to drop those battery cables for a couple minutes or so, put it back on, it should clear the code and get you back on the road. But on the fly is so much better because you, you pop up an engine code, all of a sudden you're in limp mode, you're doing 20 miles an hour, you can't go any faster from what basically what's going on. Right. The RPMs are basically regulated you can't yeah. go any faster another thing that i would highly recommend especially for some of you guys that are just changing a serpentine belt something as simple as that is going ahead and spinning those idler pulleys as a matter of fact spin all the pulleys on the front of the engine but one in particular issue that left me stranded and this is a, a personal story of mine as a matter of fact i posted a youtube video when i first started my channel but i threw an uh, engine serpentine belt it just i lost it on the highway i was doing 75 miles an hour on the fast lane just driving normally and all of a sudden Battery voltage dropped, lost all power brakes, lost all power steering. It was terrifying. You got to think about it. I got a lifted red truck on 35-inch tires. It was crazy. Luckily, I wasn't hauling a trailer. So I ended up having the truck get towed home. Now I went ahead and inspected it further, and the idler pulley froze on me. It literally froze st stiff. So it's extremely important for you guys, if you're replacing your engine belt, to go ahead and check those pulleys really quick. As a matter of fact, just replace them. They're cheap insurance. How much are idler pulleys? What do they normally go for? Yeah, it varies from where you're getting them anywhere. You know, 25 to 40, 50, 60 bucks, depending on what it is, smooth, ribbed, that sort of thing. Definitely don't cheap out on them and go, though, guys. You don't know how many times I see parts store, and I'm not knocking the parts store, guys, but it's one of those things. If you're having, you know, a 30, 40, 50 thousand dollar truck, don't buy the cheapest part possible, you know, spend the good money. Go with AC you know, Delco. AC Delco is always my go-to, you know, we're huge AC Delco guys here. Definitely always look at that stuff, especially if you hear them squealing, you know, and that sort of thing when you start the truck, it's time to replace them. And I always recommend to the customer, just do them all. If you're, if you're, if you're already got it at a shop, you're yeah. already paying the labor to get to one. Most shops aren't going to charge you labor to replace every single one. Just have them all done. That way you got peace of mind. Save your old belt too. You don't know how many times that I've seen guys where they take, you know, they just because your old belt's cracked or worn doesn't mean it's still not good. You lock up on the side of the road and let's say you need, you know, need to get off, throw that belt underneath the back seat. Every one of my trucks, I always replace the serpentine belt and I always take the old one, throw it under the back seat. Peace of mind, cheap insurance. It wouldn't be a bad idea to have a half inch breaker bar as well underneath the back seat. Take that belt tensioner, go ahead and just turn it a little bit, take the tension loose, pull off that belt, put off, put on your old one just to get you off to the side of the highway. Get a brand new one on there. So she did a previous video on this one as well. We replaced the pigtail on an LOI and it put you in tractor mode. What exactly is tractor mode? So basically what ends up happening is you start running on half the cylinders, um, depending on you got you know which cylinder it is you know that you have go down um it'll sound horrible it sounds like an old tractor basically and it'll sit there and pop and bang and knock and it's pretty brutal sounding so um usually it'll end up throwing codes going from memory don't hold me to it don't rip me apart in the comments i want to say it's like a p <laughs> 2146 or something of that nature it'll start throwing it um depending on which cylinder which bank of cylinders it is um but usually it'll throw codes of that nature um or it'll just throw a cylinder code uh you know cylinder two and seven are the most common ones on there um, basically what ended up happening was <laughs> gm decided to build the uh, build the harness a little too short so over time that harness is pulling at those two opposite ends what will end up happening is that'll wear the plugs out the plugs will start jiggling loose 
there you go. So um, we actually end up, we stock those plugs here. It's extremely common that we see those trucks coming through here. Um, so that's one really common issue that we see with the uh, the LOI and the tractoring. The other really common one too um, is the Ficum. The wires like to rub on the bracket up top there. Uh, there's usually a zip tie and from the factory they crank it really tight. What will end up happening is those wires, wires will internally break mm -hmm. and next thing you know you'll start having this run issue. You'll throw those feeling codes for the banks um, where it isn't always necessarily just you know two and seven. You may have it there, the back of the alternator. There's multiple different spots where you can get the LOI tractoring noise and that sort of thing. So definitely make sure you look at that kind of stuff. I'll be quite honest with you. When we work on those LOI trucks in particular, we never put that zip tie back on. We've had plenty of virgin trucks that have come through here where we know it's never been touched. And you may call that, you know, a hack move. But, hey, you know what? I don't want the customer broke down on the side of the road either because, well, over time that wire broke through in war, you know. So we always explain to the customer, look, if you want to put it back on, you can. But... My own personal trucks, I've always taken them, cut them off. Again, cheap insurance. <laughs> Make sure you're not broke down on the side of the road. And the last subject that I would like to hit on would be when you guys hear some of those hissy noises coming from your engine, I would never ignore that sort of thing. You know your trucks. You know how, what they sound like. And when it just sounds a little off, a couple things that I'd like for you guys to check. Now, of course, this is probably not going to leave you stranded, but it's going to really mess with the power on your truck. Not only is it going to rob your boost PSI, but it's also gonna mess with your fuel economy as well. And I've really seen this. So with that being said, up pipe bellows as well as cracked manifolds and uh, cracked up pipes as well. That's mm -hmm. another huge issue. Mm -hmm. And what I would actually look for on that end, and it does, it definitely makes a sound. It'll make a hissy, you know, exhaust sound, exhaust leak sound. But what I would do guys, I'd remove the inner fenders, get under there and look for any black sup built up on those pipes, those up pipes there, as well as your manifolds. There's any sort of black residue on that. That's definitely an indication that you have a manifold or a pipe leak. Issues that I've seen as well with my personal LBZ Duramax was the Y-Bridge O-rings, which are mated up to the actual inlet to the Y-Bridge itself. There's two O-rings. When those fail, man, do you have problems. <laughs> <laughs> You're chugging, man. You're chugging along, just trying to make it to, oh, yeah. to the next exit. This video could be a complete mile long. We can make this video. We can sit here and chat all day. We're Duramax guys, and, and again, I do appreciate you guys watching the channel and gaining knowledge. Um, so we may actually come back and do another video. If you guys are actually interested in some of the Duramax talk, let me know in the comments. We can definitely do another video for you guys. So we definitely didn't hit on everything. These diesel trucks are not cheap. We know that. As a matter of fact, sometimes it's a really good idea to buy a gasser because what do you do you turn the key and you just drive the truck you don't have to worry about a bunch of crazy fuel filters and oh i have a fuel leak here and i have a boost problem and all this other stuff but then again it's a lot of fun to own a diesel truck because not only does it sound cool let's be honest but you can pull anything only that the duramax is legendary and one more thing that i really love is upgrades just like the ryan's diesel service turbos you know the uh 64 millimeter chargers i actually have a 68 millimeter charger from you as well I pull trailers with that thing. I'm not recommending you do that, but because <laughs> I have bigger injectors, you know, I have I got feeling going on with air and all that other stuff. So my build's a little different than the average person. If I was actually using it, can you know, for livelihood, I probably would go with a 64 or a 66. Yep. Absolutely. Maybe you might agree with me on oh, that yeah, one. Absolutely. For everyday towing, definitely a 64 or 66. For yeah, sure. he, he's on this right here. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah, I'll leave a link in the description for his turbos. But definitely check him out. But seriously, guys, these diesel trucks are really awesome to upgrade. That's my favorite thing about owning a diesel. We have a long list of issues that you would be pretty much facing if you were a Duramax owner. Unfortunately, the inevitable, especially when you're pushing over 175K plus, you know, you start seeing these problems occur, especially for you LB7 guys. But may I say LB7 is king. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I still like the LMLs though. I think the LMLs are really cool. Yep. You yep. can really turn a lot of power in those things. You betcha. You betcha. Absolutely. And get all the nice, uh, you know, creature functions in the cab. So you got the nice truck. Applause, you hey, know. we could talk about the LMM too. You know, I mean, yeah. it's pretty much similar to an LBZ other than it has five extra horsepower. And I know that the EGR cooler is a little different from the LBZ. But then again, you have the creature comforts of yeah. having a 07.5 or newer. Yep. You have the nice interior. You know, you oh, got yeah. the nice look, the newer looking truck. Yep. So there's just a lot of different benefits that you can take from every truck that are really awesome. You betcha. We could talk about the LOI as well. Okay, I'm just going to stop right now, guys. All right. <laughs> I do appreciate your time as always. I'm going to get back to work here. We got a lot going on here at Ryan's Diesel Service. Make sure you stay tuned. Hit that notification bell. You guys can't miss the video. You guys are killing it. Thanks again. We'll see you on the next video. Stay tuned.